Hey everyone, Anthony Venuto with In Touch Mortgage Solutions. It's Friday, Finance Fridays, and thank you again for tuning in for another episode. On this episode, I want to talk about the difference between a co-signer and a guarantor, what that means to you if you're applying for a mortgage, and what it means for them if they're going to be joining you on that mortgage or that purchase. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. For many Canadians, getting into the real estate market can be a little bit of a challenge, especially with prices being where they are right now and housing affordability being a major concern for a lot of first time home buyers. Whether you're purchasing or refinancing, you have options if you run into a little bit of a roadblock depending on your lender and if they will allow us to add a cosigner or guarantor. In this episode, we want to talk a little bit more about a guarantor and a cosigner how they can help the application and what the difference between the two are. So we'll start off with a cosigner. Now a cosigner is basically someone who's signing up on the mortgage as well as on the property. So it's important to understand the distinction. A cosigner will be on the title and on the mortgage, which means they will have equity stake in the property. This is something that you can have a discussion with, with your lawyer on closing, depending if your lender or broker has advised you that you require a cosigner. Now, a cosigner, because they are on title and on the mortgage as well, there is obligation to them in regards to if they're looking to go out there and make a move. A lot of times people add a cosigner, maybe it's a parent, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, or grandparent to the deal in order to help qualify it. Because a cosigner can bring up the income on the deal as well as maybe strengthen the credit depending on how much income or credit or what the reason is that we need a cosigner for. So it is important to understand that distinction. But if that person is looking to venture off and do their own transaction or maybe go out there and purchase their own home or obtain their own financing, being a cosigner may impact them. So it is important to have a conversation with the cosigner and letting them know all their options and limitations to being a cosigner. But generally, you know, parents are willing to help and if they can help their children or maybe help them maybe achieve the goal of refinancing their home, maybe some debt consolidation, there are options for them to join the deal as a cosigner. And as I said earlier, it is dependent on the lender's requirement if they were going to put them on as a cosigner or if they can be added as a guarantor. Now, speaking of guarantors, the major distinction between a guarantor and a cosigner is that a guarantor is just on the mortgage component. So they are not on title at all. They are not required to be on the agreement. They're not required to be on the purchase agreement or anywhere on that actual deed or title of the property. A guarantor is only and strictly for the mortgage and for the lender to feel secure that there is an additional party in there in the event that there is a default. But guarantors are mostly reserved for insured mortgages. Those are mortgages with less than 20% down um, as that is a requirement that the insurer has allowed. So it depends on the lender because some lenders may allow a guarantor to be on a deal that has 20% or more equity down, depending on the conditions. Like for example, if that person resides at the property, but it is all case by case. And it is important to understand and have a conversation with your mortgage professional about the options and strategies back to the guarantor though. So the guarantor, as I mentioned, is strictly on the mortgage. It is there and it will appear on their credit report as well. Now that is also dependent on the lender and where you go because the guarantor's actual obligation may appear on the credit bureau, it may not appear on the credit bureau. It all depends on which lender we work with. So it is an important distinction to understand that a guarantor's uh, guaranteeing the mortgage may also impact them from making future decisions or choices down the road. Now both guarantors or co-signers are what we call required to be arm's length, which as I mentioned earlier, can be a parent, a brother, a sister, a grandparent to help qualify the deal. There are certain exceptions that are allowed. However, in general terms, they want someone who is arm's length to be on the transaction or to assist. And it depends on your lender's requirements. We've seen clients that have added, you know, very close friends to help them qualify the deal and the lender was okay with it and they've approved it. So it is important to understand these items. So when it comes to co-signing and guarantor, there, are, there is a distinction actually, and it is important to understand your options if you're purchasing the home with 20% or more down, or if you're purchasing with 20% or less down, 
and the requirements set forth by the lender. But we just want to make sure that part of our financial literacy journey is that you understand as a, consu as a consumer that you have the option that if your income is a little bit low and maybe your down payment isn't enough to cover, you know, you may have an option by adding a cosigner to get you through the door in order to help you qualify for the home that you wish to purchase. But do keep in mind one thing, whether you're adding a guarantor or a cosigner to your mortgage, it is your responsibility to make those mortgage payments. So biting off more than you can chew may not always be a good idea. You always have to look at your finances, talk to your mortgage professional, talk to your professionals about your budget, find out exactly what it's gonna cost you and if those payments are manageable because the last thing you wanna do is add someone to the deal that's gonna allow the income to go up to make the deal approved and make the deal look beautiful to the lender, but you're still having to make those monthly payments and having that affordability there in the event that interest rates go up or things change, that you're gonna be able to support that mortgage. I hope you found this video helpful. It's Friday, it's Finance Fridays, it's Financial Literacy Month in the month of November. We hope you found this video helpful. Have a great day and a better weekend. Thanks for tuning in.